Welcome everybody to the 2022 edition of Indie AWS. Super excited to have everyone here with us. Wish we could be in person, but the one advantage of being virtual is we get some of our new regulars like uh, David Soul are back again. You're gonna get an award. I think you're going for an award, aren't you? Especially with the cutest baby uh, act you got going there. Of course. Yeah. All right. So we are going to be moving uh, our meeting time to 7 p.m. to match up with our IndiePie meeting time. So the next meeting will be 7 p.m. on February or February 15th, a Tuesday, third Tuesday, a regular third Tuesday of the month. So going forward, don't make sure make sure you always hit us on the third Tuesday at 7 p.m. this time instead of doing the afternoon or lunchtime meetups like we typically had done. Uh, if you want more news and info from Indie AWS, make sure you follow the Indie AWS Twitter account. Or if you wanted to live tweet tonight's event, um, make sure you add in the Indie AWS hashtag. I know Laura will probably be doing some live tweeting as well, and we'll make sure we amplify uh, any awesome comments and messages going out from tonight. I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, Indie AWS is organized by Six Feet Up. Uh, my name is Calvin Hendricks Parker. I am the um, co-founder and CTO of Six Feet Up. So Indie AWS is brought to you by Six Feet Up. SixFip is a Python and cloud expert consulting company that helps innovative tech leaders build apps faster, innovate with AI and ML, simplify big data, and leverage cloud technologies. Using modern technologies or using modern technologies and processes, we make anything possible from our clients. Laura, you added something on there. That's new. I know. I thought you were going to read it before. <laughs> I, I totally didn't read it before. You, you know, you know that's the trick they try and play on me. Like at the uh, Python Web Conference, is, is in the closing remarks. They try and add things in to see if I will say them. And I will, whatever is on there, I will say it. Uh, I'm Calvin Hendricks Parker and I'm an AWS hero. I co-founded 60 up in 1999 and I've been the CTO ever since. So yeah, I wanna thank you all for coming. I also wanna thank our bronze sponsor. This is like month two or three with Reify Health. I don't think Jeff is here, but uh, definitely check them out. They are hiring like mad, uh, like about everybody else in the industry right now. And we wanna thank them for uh, sponsoring Indie AWS. So if you do want to sponsor Indie AWS, make sure you email laura at sixfit.com and she will get you hooked up with a sponsorship opportunity so I can say awesome things about you during the meetup and we can send awesome news about you when we send out our wrap ups. There is an Indie AWS channel in the Indie Hackers Slack. So if you're not familiar with the Indie Hackers Slack, you can go to indiehackers.org or you can go to this bit.ly uh, link right here and it actually will get you an invite into the Indie Hackers organization. Inside there, you'll find the Indie AWS Slack channel for our group. Uh, one other big piece of news, uh, don't forget we, I just mentioned it earlier, kind of nice lead in. We have our fourth annual Python Web Conference with 60 talks, 350 attendees from last year. Uh, we had over 40 countries uh, in, in attendance. What's gonna be cool, we've got, um, we've added more tracks this year. Uh, we've got two app tracks, we've got a cloud track, we've got a full culture track. Uh, we've got an AI ML or data track. So there is definitely going to be something that you would be interested in, even if you are not strictly a Python person, come for the cloud and stay for the Python. It's going to be a good time. Uh, it'll be across four days. Yeah, 21st to the 25th. Uh, we're doing half days, five days, sorry, five days, five half days. Uh, there'll be keynotes each day. It should be a lot of fun. There'll be a whole full Slack channel full of all the, your best friends who are hanging out at the conference and talking and chatting with everybody. So come do that with us. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we have moved to meetingplace.io. If you want to claim your meetup.com uh, profile on meetingplace.io, you can go to this URL right here, and it will actually allow you to claim your meetup.com profile over on meetingplace.io, because they all got moved over for you. All right, that all being said, now the reason you're all here, uh, not to hear me talk, but actually to hear uh, Alex and David. So I will go ahead and unshare my screen and let them take it away. Yeah, hey, thanks, Calvin. Um, and you're very welcome. Yeah, thanks to Six Feet Up and the team for inviting us here and letting us speak to you all today about uh, PowerPoint tips and tricks. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. Amazon PowerPoint. Connect, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, didn't want to throw you guys. Um, just a little levity, hopefully not much more than that. Um, hey, one thing I noticed that that photograph I sent you, Molly, that I, I looked much better back then. And, and as you said, we've aged 10 years in the last two, it feels like. So I have, definitely have to update my photo there. So Again, thanks for having us. Um, uh, you know, hopefully you all have some familiar, familiarity with AWS. Um, obviously a lot of services uh, probably pushing close to 200 at this stage, but the one that um, 
you know, we're here to talk to you about today uh, is part of the user group is Amazon Connect, and that's uh, Amazon's omni-channel contact center as a service solution. Um, been around since 2017 and um, and going like gangbusters and, and picked up a lot during the pandemic when a lot of contact center agents had to work from home. So um, I'll cover the heritage, uh, you know, the benefits of Amazon Connect, you know, why customers chose it. Um, and then I'm going to do my best to leave some time to uh, for Alex Schreemeyer, the, the, uh, uh, our solution architect, the smarter half of the Dave and Alex uh, duo here to hopefully spin up an instance and show you how it works. And we've, we've helped customers through um, immersion days, boot camps, to be able to spin up uh, Amazon Connect instances in a matter of a couple of days. That's the beauty of the cloud and, and the beauty of Amazon Connect as a service. So I am going to turn my video off. Let me see if I can share my screen. All right, thumbs up. That's a good thing. So again, Dave Putlack here. Alex, Alex, Please, I'm, I apologize. Do an introduction of yourself, please. Yeah, sure thing. Alex Schreemeyer, I am the uh, other half of the Dave and Alex show here. Uh, Dave and I help serve customers uh, in AWS, Amazon Connect in the central region. I'm actually based out of Indianapolis, so I am, am close to uh, most of you, I would assume, here. We're on the west side near Eagle Creek and, and been here in the area for a uh, number of years now, so that's... That's the short bit. Back to you, Dave. All right. So we got introductions out of the way. As I said, we'll just, you know, Amazon Connect, what we hear from customers, you know, why Amazon Connect, why they chose it. A little bit first about the heritage, very interesting heritage, um, what customers say about Amazon Connect and the benefits. And then we'll get into a Q&A and hopefully leave some time here to spin up an instance to actually show you uh, Connect in action. So just to start off with, it, here's, you know, just some of the questions we hear and we've heard from customers um, about, you know, why, why they're looking at contact center improvements and customer experience overall, right? From, um, as we see, you know, how do they improve CSAT scores, net promoter scores, things you hear about. Um, you know, as you're probably aware, companies are competing not only across you know, their products and services, but really also how they handle the customer experience. So you can make a great product, but unless you can get it to your customers quickly and also serve as it most effectively when your customers need it, you may not be best positioned to keep your customers and grow market share. So those are some of the things that we're seeing right now, especially at the, with the speed at which, you know, we see businesses and the industries and the markets move, right? It's easy to get information. It's easy to find information. So customers are becoming more and more demanding and you as the provider of products or services need to meet that need and meet that demand. So, you know, customers, you know, how can I pilot something very quickly, which is something that the cloud really helps you foster, right? New concepts, spin them up um, and do that without a large upfront cost, spin them down if you need to when you're done or keep them rolling, right? And, and as I said, you know, through boot camps and immersion days, we're helping customers spin up environments very quickly so that they can test things out. And I'll give you an example of a true to life customer that needed to do something, just my personal experience, I know there are many more, but during the pandemic, how a customer was able to move uh, very quickly with uh, Connect. So again, just some of the questions we're hearing in the marketplace. Um, as the slide says, you know, businesses are already trusting AWS for innovation around customer experience, i.e. CX in many ways, and you know, undoubtedly some familiar names here. You know, I mentioned Amazon.com, but you're probably familiar with Zillow. Zillow has been very popular during the pandemic. People thinking about where the heck can I go live? Tell me, give me a cool place to live and I can work remotely from anywhere, right? So, you know, a lot of the technology behind the, the scenes at Zillow is powered by, powered by AWS. Uh, likewise at Lyft, uh, you're familiar with the car, you know, uh, service. Um, this, this, as you can see here, includes, you know, companies that have been in the space, the you know, brick and mortar, Johnson & Johnson, Nike for a long time, or, or the born in the clouds like the Airbnbs and the Yelp. So, you know, whether the experiences these companies provide happen through their products or people or their apps, 
you know, whether it's at a physical location or through the web, um, it, it's it's incumbent upon these customers and probably your companies as well to be uh, more cent, you know, customer centric, agile, and competitive. And it's not uncommon to think product innovation has a biggest impact on differentiating a company from its competitors, you know, over time, whether, again, whether it's a product or a service and you want to keep replicating and, and innovating on, on what you do and what you make. So probably no surprise here, it's just a, a, a study that was done by Watermark in 2019. So customer companies that focus on customer experience, i.e. the leaders in customer experience, outperform the broader market when you think in terms of the S&P 500 by 45 points, which is notable, right? So, um, and, and, and laggards likewise are, are not in a good place in terms of the S&P 500s. And, and this is something that CEOs have stated overwhelmingly that more than any other element of their business, customer experience is the most effective method for creating competitive advantage. Um, and you're seeing that here, and this is just public companies, i.e. in relation to the S&P 500. So essentially customers want to do business with brands that provide effective low cost or, or low effort customer experience. Um, and then, you know, to get further into the details, one area where customers continue to, uh, the companies continue to struggle rather, is delivering really delightful experiences within their contact center. So you think about the customer experience that could be in a number of channels, the contact center being just one of them. And that's where uh, Amazon Connect really focuses. So kind of a busy slide here, but you, know, you think about you know, why customers call your, your call center. And this is just an example here. You think about you know, you're an airline and they're calling to, to, to call about a flight they need, or, or someone needs to file a claim, or you open during lockdown. So the whole notion of the contact center has really evolved, yeah, as, as I mentioned, as have customer expectations. So, um, you know, in some cases, some customers are okay with chatbot interaction, which I am, I'm good with that. In other cases, they wanna talk with a live agent, right? Maybe a, a chatbot can only get you so far, I know when I call my cable provider who will go unnamed, a lot of times I, I'm like, okay, time to talk to an agent. I wanna hit the agent button, I hit zero, 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 and yet I, has, I still have to go through that chatbot experience. So, you know, the problem is story because it's been call centers where and in many cases are a collection of disparate point solutions, right? So we're thinking back to call centers that were uh, deployed like in the nineties or even before that. And it's just, you, you they, slapped CRM systems on top of that, tried to integrate those, tried to integrate an R IVR. Um, and you know, that leads to problems. Can you, can you upgrade one without upgrading the other? And in many of those cases, you've got to call professional services. You've got to hire you know, consultants to come in and try to treat, tweak one of those things or the whole thing to get an appropriate system or record. Um, the contact center of the future really makes it easy to leverage customer data in real time to personalize and contextualize customer experience. You know, so for example, being able to interact naturally with the self-service experience. If you tell a virtual agent you'd like to check the balance of your account, the system knows who you are via caller ID, right? It's, it's known the number you've called from and it's able to authenticate you based on your voice. So these are things that you're able to do uh, with Amazon Connect. So companies are already delivering experience that are personalized in many ways. So um, again, like me, you're okay with a chatbot, but we're also seeing customers want to put you know, chatbot into their web and then be a, being able to have their customers when the time is right or when the frustration is right, okay, I need to talk to an agent. Being able to do that now right away and being able to do it seamlessly. So we're seeing an evolution around how data and how customers want to access data um, to do a variety of things, just a few of them of which you see here on the screen. So these are some of the challenges. And this was a study that was done uh, by Forrester Research back in 2020. And this, is, this was a survey that Forrester did around 
uh, Amazon Connect customers in Forrest are asking, why did you migrate to Amazon Connect? And these were the top six that they came up with. So, you know, kind of things I touched on earlier, expensive legacy solutions, really just complex to try to integrate with web, um, with underlying databases, which is with a CRM system, really complex to try to integrate those and, and large upfront costs. Those of you that have been, you know, in the software space and know how software has historically been licensed, a lot of it is seat-based license, a lot of it is server-based licenses. The, the beauty of the cloud is that it is all consumption-based. So you spin things up when you use them, you spin them back down when you don't, you pay for them when you need it. Um, and that speaks to the inability or difficulty to scale up and scale down easily at a low cost. Again, part of the beauty of AWS overall and then Amazon Connect specifically. Um, outages, right? You're managing environments that maybe you're not familiar with that you because you don't deal with perhaps a call center technology on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So um, that's where you want that environment to be professionally managed. Uh, one of the things that our customers have told us and why, in fact, Alex and I just got off a call with another customer earlier today, is these customers are looking for the ability to leverage AI as part of the platform. And this is one of the things, um, you know, if you're part, if you listen to some of the, the AWS reInvent announcements around Connect, uh, you saw that some of the recent features that we announced were around call summarization. So I know that when I talk to customers, I wish that there was a capability for me outside of Connect to be able to just listen to a customer without taking notes because I'm a terrible note taker. Well, within Connect, your agents are able to do that because the, the, the Connect service is actually taking what uh, your customers are saying and putting that into text and then summarizing the high points of that conversation so that they're able to focus, the agent that is, is able to focus on the actual customer conversation and yet have a record of that phone call so they can act upon that behind the scenes. So we're seeing AI and ML being built within the services and Connect is just one exception of that. And um, so again, just a variety of important reasons here why uh, customers are choosing Connect just overall, the pace of innovation, the types of innovation we're delivering within Connect, and then the cost, really. Again, a consumption-based model. So really, um, how Amazon uh, Connect came about, uh, it was fostered by a company you've probably heard of, the parent company of ours, Amazon.com. So as they started to scale up in you know, 2003, 2005, and Amazon.com started looking for uh, a call center service that fit their needs, right? Being able to address at the time were probably tens of thousands of customers, now millions of customers, a few languages, now dozens of languages, and now you can see 32 countries here. Even at the time when, when Amazon.com was much smaller, there wasn't really a call center solution in the marketplace that was able to meet the, the demands that, uh, that were required of Amazon.com. You just think about fulfillment there uh, and be able to do that. And so that's where AWS came to the fore and actually developed a solution that was specific for Amazon.com. And as I said, in 2017, we took that service to market to provide to you all the customers to leverage, right? So it's a uh, contact center as a service born in the cloud capability. And as you see here, amazon.com is using it to service over um, you know, millions of customers. And we have over, I think this slide's even a little bit dated, but I think we're over 100,000 customer service associates that are you know, serving you, the customer, around the clock. I, I have a personal um, sort of high point when I, I ordered a Wi-Fi extender probably six months ago. And as I typically do, I get the thing, I run rapid, I throw the, I throw the manual in the garbage. And lo and behold, a week later, the, it goes on the fritz. And I was like, oh, geez, I wish I had that manual. So I had never called amazon.com before, but I called the number 
And I'm like, how are they going to be able to help me, right? You're talking about millions and millions, if not billions of products uh, that are sold via the retail channel. And I got on the phone with an agent, gave the product number. I didn't even need to give a serial number, but that agent was able to point me to a YouTube video and a link to the manual, like within a matter of minutes. And I thought that was pretty amazing. You know, a lot of companies, you might think that's not a big deal, but I just thought about it in the context of the Amazon.com being able to help me just in a specific case where, again, there's billions of products that Amazon.com provides to the marketplace. I just thought that was, that was really cool that I was able to get one I needed in, in such a, you know, a, a short period of time. So again, you know, some of the, 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 the beauty of Amazon Connect, you, just like Amazon retail customer service, you know, now our customers can scale in an instance to handle unlimited agent and contact volumes. And the differentiators you see on the slide represent why customers are using and choosing Amazon Connect. So self-service configuration, for example. So enabling rapid innovation that was really impossible with legacy contact centers that required you know, professional services engagements. If, if you, the customer, wanted to experience, experiment with new features, you needed to re-engage uh, consultants to do that. And with Connect, customers had access to new features really immediately via your management console. They can get started with them in the free tier, which you're pro probably familiar with if you're familiar with AWS, there's a free tier to start kicking the tires with uh, new services that you might not be familiar with. Uh, one application replaced many. I will tell you that Amazon Connect pro provides a ton of capabilities. Uh, we don't do everything to date, right? There's things that you probably use like workforce management solutions uh, that you, we integrate with third-party providers around Calibrio, but you, know, you can do... Um, uh, contact center uh, flows, develop those in the service, and then leverage third parties as you need it. Um, you probably see, you saw that uh, there's a high volume outbound communications technology, i.e. a dialer that uh, AWS is going to be bringing to market here uh, very shortly. I shouldn't say date, so I won't. Um, but again, we continue to iterate. And, and if you think anything about uh, cloud, about AWS and about Connect, it's the pace of innovation with which we're delivering solutions here. Um, you know, the ability to spin things up rather quickly is notable. I can give you an example of a customer of mine that during the pandemic, I think this was in mid 2020, where I got a call from a CIO and he said, we have to have our agents work from home and we don't have a capability, can you help? And I said, well, can you get equipment delivered to your agent's home? Um, and he said, yeah, we can have it there by the weekend. And I said, we can spin up whatever number of agents you want over the weekend. And we started, that company started with 200. And later that year, they were able to, um, their path was to, and the, the customer in this case is Sears Home Service. So you think about what they do, they sell warranties, they sell service contracts, they sell parts, and they were able to, in one week, they would train their service contract staff on Amazon Connect, and then the following week, they were able to deploy their those agents into Connect. The next week, they went to the warranty folks. The week after that, the, the parts folks. So they were able to spin up to 3,700 agents in the matter of six weeks, which again, speaks to the scale and the ability to move quickly in the cloud. And again, they, they have spiky seasons when, when the weather gets really warm, air conditions start to break and they need, and customers need parts. So you see a lot of agent calls then, but then they'll get their, their slower periods and are able to scale down consumption. And likewise, their costs during those periods go down. So again, uh, being able to deploy quickly, be able to provide dynamic, uh, personalized experience, embedded AI and ML. So customers like Sears Home Services who had said, we become contact lens ninjas and contact lens is one of our AI services. And what that does is it helps them measure customer sentiment. So 
they use contact lens as a training mechanism to help discern a good call from maybe a not so good call. And it helps train their agents to become um, better at what they do. Because they say, our whole job is to get customers, we get them on the phone, we want to get them what they need as quickly as possible, move on to the next call. There's no shortage of calls there. So that's one of the areas among many where Amazon Connect is able to help them. We won't go through this. I mentioned, uh, you know, you see feature launches over the last three years. Um, there's even newer things we don't see listed here. I mentioned call summarization that was announced uh, in December at uh, AWS reInvent. A lot of capabilities. Again, you think about pace of innovation. This service has only been in the marketplace four to five years. You may be uh, you may have deployments in your environment that uh, technologies that have been uh, that are around since the 80s or 90s. Um, we're quick, quickly catching up. In many cases, we've caught them. And in the next year or two, we will have surpassed many of the providers there. And they, again, this is because this is a born in the cloud solution and service. And we're innovating very rapidly, as you can see from some of the major releases here. I know I'm talking a lot. Questions? All right. Well, we'll get time for Q&A, but just to, uh, yes. we're about to Sorry. wrap up here. Yep, go ahead. I was looking for the mute button. Uh, how does it work for Spanish speaking countries? Uh, I'm from Mexico. So the big question we always have is, uh, does it works in other languages? It does. Um... I, I had on a prior, Alex, do you know off the top of your head how many languages we're supporting now on Connect? I know Spanish is one of them. I'd have um, to look up the exact number, but Spanish is, is definitely one of them. I know that we do um, kind of differentiate between um, Spanish Spain and Spanish Mexico, as far as the dialects mm -hmm. are concerned. Um, under the hood, Amazon Connect uses um, other AWS services like Amazon Poly or Amazon Lex, if you're familiar with those. So Poly for text to speech and Lex for ASR or, or speech recognition. And those both will be able to provide uh, voices so that you can go ahead and regionalize your responses back to your customers in the native languages, as well as understand what they're saying, understand in the language that they're speaking. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Any other questions? I see oh, yeah, region no. bound resource. Do you mind clarifying what you're asking there? Kibiru? Actually, I had a question. Are, are there tie-ins with Alexa? So if I had an Alexa app for my product, I could use this to, to handle support? So there's not like a, a direct integration from the Alexa platform to Amazon Connect. Um, Amazon Connect accepts inbound calls via the PSTN. So you can tell Alexa to make a call. You can have like an API hook or something like that to facilitate that process. We've had customers that have done that to do, um, you know, either smart home or smart tech enabled type of technologies that are there. Um, an example of one of those would be Capital One who utilizes AWS for a number of different services, contact centers, one of them. And they do have their, their digital assistant that they allow and, and put onto smart home devices like Alexa. And it allows them to integrate not just to their backend systems, but then if they need to escalate over to an agent, they can facilitate that handoff process. That's cool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. Uh, so here you just see some of the results that, uh, again, the Forrester research had put out, um, again, just surveying existing customers, what they were able to um, achieve with Amazon Connect. So you see the reduced call volumes, uh, a lot of that being able to be handled self-service by customers, um, shortening that uh, average handle time. Uh, by up to 15%, again, getting a customer what they need, getting, you know, making them happy, getting them off the phone. It's, it's what it's all about. Um, reduce training time, supervisor efforts, uh, license costs, certainly a big one, but not the only one. Again, it's, it's just about providing uh, 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 the most excellent customer experiences possible via the platform and being able to do it at a lower cost of ownership. And you see there the 241% ROI uh, that was achieved. And that's just compared to other contact center as a service provider. So let alone the on-prem, which, uh, which the ROI is probably substantially higher than that. 
And, you know, again, the NASCAR slide, uh, Alex mentioned Capital One. I mentioned Sears Home Services. You'll see a variety here. Um, Mutual of Omaha. Uh, I don't think a Hilton Hotels is on here. They may be, but you think about these, some of these customers that, that do large, large volumes of customer interactions via the contact center, and, and they're able to achieve, uh, you know, significant advantage both from a capabilities and a cost stand standpoint with Amazon Connect. Hopefully your companies will be on here in the near future. <laughs> so just one example of a, of a large scale migration from a legacy environment. So into it, you think about them that the, the uh, you know, the tax, primarily think of them as tax, but they're really a, 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 a kind of a diverse financial services company with their previous contact center, uh, and to its ops team were pretty much 100% focused on preparing for a peak tax season, load testing, managing licenses, upgrading and patching applications. Um, and, and due to the complexity of that system, you know, with multiple siloed tools for channels, self-service, a complex environment of agents, all that software was focused on keeping the system just operational, right? Um, with really zero effort to improve customer experience. So after moving 33,000 agents to Amazon Connect in less than a year, uh, they are successfully handling peak scale during tax time. Um, and, and Intuit announced they were able to run over 100 experiment, experiments rather to improve customer experience just in the first six months on Amazon Connect. Um, and again, being able to turn features on and off with ease uh, customers like Intuit are only paying for what they use, right? So peaking up, having a, you know a, a boatload more agents online during peak season to handle, let's say tax season, and then being able to spin them off. So um, some of the things they mentioned that uh, you know being able to innovate rapidly with the service here, achieving 100% uh, uptime and then being able to deploy these agents, migrating 33,000 agents in less than a year. So very notable achievements in a large, large scale migration via Intuit. Some of the levers, and we won't get into these in detail. So if you're thinking about call center uh, innovation and you have a project on, underway, there's a variety of levers and, and, and services we can bring to bear. Obviously, AWS has professional services steeped in Amazon Connect. We have a plethora of customers, um, you know, Proficient, Voice Foundry, among others that, that are uh, very schooled in deploying Amazon Connect. I know Proficient came to the fore with my customer Sears Home Service. Um, Voice Foundry, very prominent in the marketplace. We're able to uh, pursue funding for pilot programs that you may be thinking about. Um, we're ramping up training and certification this year. So doing instructor-led training around Connect uh, to get you up to speed quickly. Um, just a, a, a variety of levers here. Um, you know, one of the things I, I may have mentioned with Sears is they started with a boot camp, So it was really helping them this is back in the good old days when we used to do things in person. Um, we did a boot camp over a couple of days, and then by the end of day two, they had spun up a uh, an active contact center environment that they could use and leverage like right away, and that led them to say, "Hey, can we train more agents?" So we did a boot camp just for them, um, and that just spawned their adoption of the service, as I said, over 3,600 agents. So a very cool solution there. And it speaks to the ability to do things rather quickly. And here are some resources that can help with that. So I'll stop there, see if there's any questions we have. Um, uh, and you know, let me know that if the time permits, we can also have Alex, if he's uh, kind enough to do it, spin up an environment for us and we can take a look at it in, in action. Um, but want to see if you have any questions. So maybe this will play right into what Alex is going to do. But is it possible to use like cloud formation or Terraform to spin up these environments so that it can you know store them in version control and you know, reuse them in other places? Yeah, definitely. It's not what I'm going to show you here in just a bit, but 
uh, definitely the, the concept or the vision that we have for Reconnect is to have that contact center as code. So the ability not just to do a first deployment, but think of a backup, think of a migration. Um, you want to deploy in a secondary region. You're a partner that wants to bring your services to other customers and to have your integration with you know, Salesforce or insert custom product here and be able to just have that integration ready to go deploy. They go ahead and put in their URL and their you know, identity provider information that's there and it's up and running. That's really what we are looking to you know, get. Um, a couple of key APIs that are needed to really kind of uh, finish that off, but there's a, a, a high amount of customization that exists today via open APIs and CloudFormation support um, here in early 2022. Awesome. Any other questions? I am, since Dave gave me six minutes here, I'm gonna, gonna jump in and see if we can't get a, an instance of an up just to kind of show you what that process looks like here. Yeah. So those that are familiar with the AWS console, you'll either search for Amazon Connect or click it. For me, it's recently visited because I'm there all the time. Um, but if you navigate to that, it'll, it'll go ahead and bring up what we call the Amazon Connect console experience. Amazon Connect is supported in a variety of regions, uh, US East 1, US West 2. I'm in the Canadian region right now just because I want to, um, but we do have um, availability in a variety of regional endpoints across the, uh, across the world. Setting up a, a Connect instance is a five-step process. It should take me about five minutes here. First is deciding how you want to store your users. If I was a, an enterprise, I'd probably do SAML, but for the interest of time, I'll go ahead and do a let's do this and put in a url um, that's going to be the access url that's going to be how administrators how supervisors agents are going to access the application and so it's a way to kind of get that uh, website spun up so the infrastructure can be put behind it you can create an administrator which i will go ahead and make myself From here, you have the ability to select telephony. So Amazon Connect is not just a contact center in the cloud from an infrastructure perspective and an application. We're also a REST org, so you can claim numbers inside of Amazon Connect, both toll frees and DIDs, port numbers, or if you don't want to port your numbers, you can forward them over as well and allow them to operate on the system. That setting there just allows you to dictate, do you want to allow for outbound calling? Do you want to restrict inbound calling? By default, we're going to enable both of those. From a data storage perspective, if you do advanced options, you can really configure exactly where your data resides. So data residency requirements, if you have existing Amazon S3 buckets for storage that currently have life, life cycle policies and um, have audit controls on them already, you can use your existing buckets. You can also use your existing encryption keys to encrypt your data, be it call recordings, chat transcripts, uh, chat attachments. Um, if you don't choose this, uh, Connect will go ahead and create a S3 bucket for you automatically, and then use an encryption key so that way your data is encrypted um, from the start. But you can always change that later on if you need to. One thing with Connect is you always get to choose where your data resides, even if that does differ from where it was initially done. Uh, in about two minutes here, I was able to make it to the portion where it actually starts creating. Um, we get to stare at a progress bar at the top right now. And at that point in time, I'm gonna pause for questions until we actually get the instance uh, launched here. I made it this far. So I assume the under the covers, this is like de deploying EC2 instances to to handle all these kinds of operations. What does the free tier include if you just want to kick the tires? Yeah, so the free tier is going to allow 12 months of uh, platform usage, and then it's going to allow 30 minutes, I believe, of DID. I believe 30 minutes of toll free. Might need to check me those exact numbers there a month, so you're able to go ahead and. Um, you know, have test call flows. Since everything is usage-based, our pricing metrics are going to be minutes, essentially connected minutes is is what you would be charged for. And so then the free tier credits, of course, get consumed before any charges actually happen. Um, once you're out of free tier, that also includes one number. Um, you know, there's pricing mechanisms for uh, just like any carrier claimed phone numbers we do per day. So if you need a number for five days and you don't need it, you're not paying for it the rest of the month. You just have it for five days and then you release it. Um, chats, tasks, any other types of integrations are gonna also kind of be a part of that, uh, that free tier there as well, um, inclusive of say like the S3 recordings for that initial period of time. 
after 12 months, it's then at the, the normal rates. And um, like most AWS services, our pricing is all going to be public. So we do go ahead and list all of our pricing here on the Connect page, um, which I'll just go ahead and link to. The Connect instance is also deployed, by the way. I just saw the green bar pop up there. Um, but it, there's the free tier, which is what you were just asking about. So first 12 months, you get um, a DID number, 30 minutes of inbound DID, 30 minutes of outbound, and then in the US, we get that 30 toll free. So that would be what's inclusive there, in addition to the chats, the tasks, the profiles, um, contact lens and voice ID that's listed there as well. Um, cool, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, as we saw here, it is successfully created. And so from here, I can either go directly to the, the URL or hit get started. And from here, I now have a fully functional Amazon Connect instance. Uh, there's no such thing as a dev instance or a test instance, but we do have service quotas. Those are the training wheels to make sure that no one uh, malicious comes in and tries to go ahead and robo dial a bunch of people. Um, so you do have uh, some modest requirements there for any organization that was gonna use this under production, a simple support ticket or working with your account team goes ahead and unblocks you based on the limits or the needs that you need to do. Um, the very first thing you do when you set up an instance is claim a phone number and you could claim a phone number. And within a couple of minutes, you can start making calls in your instance and configuring that experience. And we are at time. So I made it. <clears throat> can, you, can you show like from the agent's ex experience, is it soft clients? Do you support like hard phones? Yep. What, what's, what's that part look like? Yeah, so Amazon Connect is going to use WebRTC for soft phones. For those that need to use something other than WebRTC, um, shaky internet connection, you know, temporary disruption, still need to be able to have that business continuity. We do support um, off-site phones, and that's going to be across the PSTN. So that's going to be a, a phone call out to maybe an IP PBX on-prem, going to a hard phone, a cell phone, a landline. But primarily, agents by and large are going to be using the built-in soft phone client, which is going to be using the WebRTC protocol. Okay. I assume that was actually what just tried to pop up there when you were like said they wanted access to your microphone. Yep. It's actually this right here. So in okay. this little UI right here, when you claim a number, um, it does allow you kind of this, this first kind of very handholdy experience to make sure that you're able to go through the process there. So this is an example of what, what we call the CCP or the contact control panel looks like. And it does support the, the voice, the chat, and then we have a task channel here as well. Um, it can also be accessed by clicking on the button up here, which would go ahead and launch that as a uh, pop-up. And then we do have an embeddable or a, a fully fledged agent application that goes ahead and um, provides a little bit of a different UI, integrates into some of our other um, modules like uh, customer profiles to seamlessly see details about customers as they're calling in, as well as other modules that we have as well. Uh, one of the benefits about Amazon Connect is the extensibility. So just because we have this CCP or this soft phone here, this can be embedded into CRMs like Salesforce, applications like Zendesk, homegrown applications. Um, so it doesn't have to be the center stage. It can be a part of the overall experience. You can integrate other applications into it, the open APIs. And um, we do have a, a couple of different libraries that are fully customizable, published on GitHub. So anyone can really go in and take a look at it and say, I like how this does, but I don't like how it works, or I like how this works and you know, being able to really have that full experience there. It's not just our vision of what we think a contact center should be. It's really allowing customers to customize that to where they want, but also providing that out of the box experience because not everyone needs or wants to customize as well. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I assume there's like a GUI for building call flows and you could export that to cloud formation if you wanted. Yeah, yeah. So there is a GUI for, we call those contact flows. This is going to be the IVR, the entry <clears> experience. <throat> it's going to be a drag and drop type of a process here. The system does come out of the box with a number of different flows. So that way you don't have to kind of start from scratch and start from nothing. It does give you that kind of understanding of what does a first experience really look like. Um, and I'm just going to open up one that already exists. And so this is all going to be um, modules. It's going to be drag and drop. It's going to be a very um, you know, kind of start to input and then output type of a process there. It's kind of your visual programming, the ability to connect objects together, uh, drag and drop, connect, and then the ability to go ahead and export. So everything's able to be done by a business user through the UI. You can export, you can import, you can save, you can publish, um, but these same things can be built via APIs and you can export, import, migrate, um, take samples and customize them for, via the available APIs. Any other questions now that we actually have something up and functional? 
if someone does call that number, it should be up by now, I would assume. <laughs> it would probably ring me, but yeah, we, we claimed a real number, so. I'm surprised no one's called the number yet. I know, right? All right, I want to see this work. I'm going to call the number. Yeah, it does take a couple of minutes for the very first number you claim just because all the dependencies need to be created. Any further number claims are typically good, but I feel like we've given it enough time that it should probably be up by now. And if everyone's trying, it should be putting you through the, the first kind of experience here. Yeah, mine's still trying to connect. He said it may still be going through the setup process. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Is that anything? Did it connect you? Call's connected, but there's nothing nothing going on. Here, try and, try and give it another call. Let's see what's going right. on. We'll do that. Oh, there we go. Hello, thanks for calling. These are some examples of what we expect to see as virtual contact centers can enable you to- So I could hear for a little bit, but looks like it's kind of coming over, but it's, uh, it's being played this prompt right now. So, with text to speech, instead of having to provision a you know TTS server or integrate with a third party, you're able to use Amazon Poly to go ahead and input the text. You also have the ability to do SSML. So if you need additional inflection or additional options or uh, no, ordinal cool. digits, instead of saying 12,345, say you know, one, two, three, four, five, you have the flexibility to do that. Um, you can set the voices and change the voices. So that was our that was our Joanna voice that just greeted you there. And then you were provided with this, uh, I'm getting rang. You must have uh, pressed the button to talk to an agent here. And so here I am getting rang from a 317 number. So uh, someone else. answer that. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> Let's see if, if, if my headset has an issue being on. I want that'll work going both at the same time. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm on Zoom and this at the same time. I can hear you. <laughs> so that's gonna be what the, the customer, I'm gonna mute myself here just so I don't get too much feedback. Um, that's gonna be what that experience is gonna look like from the agent. Of course, this could be just the pop-up. It could be embedded into a website, into a CRM, into another application there. But they'd be able to have this call control hold, mute, and um, you know dial outbound, quick connects are gonna be transfers to other lines of business or other agents. Um, in this case, I have just been disconnected on. And so now I'm going to be in this after call work or after contact work state where I could do things like follow up, take notes, create a task to go ahead and um, you know send work to somebody else, put this in an automation queue to go ahead and do an automated process so I don't have to, a uh, number of different things. And then the moment that I go ahead and um, close this contact, I'm now available for anyone else that's going to go ahead and call through that system there. So. As far as building this out, you know, this is a, a Git customer input. Someone, you know, would have been asked to press one to be put in queue, press two to, you know, go somewhere else. We have a variety of different samples that can happen here. Secure content. We integrate with AWS Lambda to do data dips. So you can write integrations to other systems, do lookups, uh, get data out of a DynamoDB table, other AWS services or other non-AWS services. Um, via existing Lambda code or code written for these types of integrations. You, know, you can test screen pops, A-B testing, call recording, create a task. So that's all part of the simple out of the box um, kind of way to allow you to experiment with it. Again, we're you know 13 minutes past instance creation here and we've already got an active call. You already called in, we're able to speak to Joanna and here you could be pressing options one through seven to really go ahead and see these different types of flows, whether it routes to an agent or whether it doesn't, allows you to go ahead and experience kind of what that you know process looks like there. And um, you know, all the way through, you know, you have your prompts, your cues, your hours for operation, you have your real time and your historical metrics, um, save reports, agent management, integrations, other items like that. So that's that's it. And I know we're past time. I'm happy to stick around and answer any more questions, but do want to be respectful of the, the end time oh, of the no, meeting here. So yeah, we, we appreciate uh, you and David both being here and, and uh, showing us this cool tool.
Yeah. Any other questions learned... before? Uh... Yeah, anybody got questions? Please uh, feel free to ask them now. Or call the number. Or call and, the uh, number. It, and we get, know it'll get, ring to me. I'm available. And get connected so. to Alex. <laughs> Uh, hey, this is Alex Roth from AWS. I just wanted to jump in and point out that if you guys liked what you saw today, if you're interested in learning more, if you're into Amazon Connect, uh, we just started a user group the other month and we have our upcoming quarterly meeting in February. We're going to have a customer present um, that date in there that you see is wrong. Unfortunately, it says February 3rd. We're going to push it out a little bit because we have a customer presenting but uh, if you want to join that, that's a fun thing to do. And we also have a free virtual workshop coming up. If you have some experience with Amazon Connect already, it's advanced. What was the link for it? It's in the chat. Um, yeah, I dropped both in the chat. And then I'll also send perfect. the link um, to the meetup organizers so they can post it as well. I assume it'll be virtual? The, the yeah. Yeah, both events are virtual. Thank you very much. And then David, I see you put a question there about uh, specifics of Mexico. Um, on the pricing page that I did link earlier, we do you know, price out you know, the telephony for all the regions that we support. So Mexico is gonna have the, the DID rates, the toll free rates and what that looks like. Um, we don't currently offer instances in Mexico. We, you know, in the North America, we have U.S. East, U.S. <laughs> yes. West, and, and Canada. But we do have customers in Mexico as well as Latin, other Latin America countries or Central American countries um, using Connect out of either of those regions. You know, there's ways to go ahead and test things like latency and test, you know, connections to really see which one's the best. Um, I would say probably East one, but it really just kind of depends. And, and certainly we do have customers that um, are able to still have great experiences in those environments. Yes, I can tell you that the smallest latency is US East one. Okay. Perfect. I see it comes the, the prices. Yes, I have to check all of that. Thank you very much. Yeah, just, don't, just don't call Antarctica. Holy mackerel, <laughs> or the Ascension Islands. Yeah. <clears throat> those are those some are... pricey per minute. Those are some, um, those are some, you know, 900 number rates right there. Yeah. Ascension Islands, yeah. They must be connected only via satellite or something. Excellent. Well, Dave and Alex, thank you so much for being here. I give you a big round of applause for uh, coming and hanging out with our Indianapolis group. Uh, hopefully someday, Alex, we can actually get together in person. I didn't know yeah. you were actually here in Indy. So we'll have to do that. We'll at least try and get a social or something going here in the near future once the omicron peak and all crashes down and is done hopefully fingers crossed yeah fingers crossed well thanks again for having us here M much appreciated um <clears throat> thanks to those of you who attended here um you know hopefully you learned something today again feel free to kick the tires on amazon connect um if you need further assistance contact myself alex or Alex Roth, um, we're happy to help. Awesome, I appreciate it.